Well, thank you. I'm, <clears throat> I'm really, uh, really, really thrilled to be here because um, I'm at a stage in my life, I'm 70 years old, and I'm at a stage in my life which I sort of described as the transition between the second phase and the third phase in which my goal is to uh, pass along whatever I've learned that has been helpful to other people. I think life basically operates in three phases. The first phase is you're dependent on others in your learning. Second phase, you're working and others become dependent on you, trying to be successful. And then in third phase, um, you don't, you want, you want to make this transition. You're no longer interested in being successful. The best thing you can do is pass along <clears throat> what is maybe help other people be successful because it's a journey. In my particular case, um, I was a, I fell in love with the markets when I was a kid, when I was about 12 years old. I started, I was caddying and I, then I got my caddying money and I started to play the markets. Um, and then um, I'm, a, and I play, I'm a global macro investor. So I have to bet on economics um, as it becomes manifested in prices in the markets. So that's what I, that's what I do. That's my game and I love it. Um, and over doing, over a period of time, um, I went through a whole bunch of experiences that were, um, you know, eye opening experiences, most valuably the mistakes. One of the great things about the markets is it's not difficult to, it's not easy to beat the markets. And there's a consensus out there that's captured in the markets. And so it makes understanding of economics very practical because I get a scorecard. And based on that scorecard, and also positive and negative reinforcement of the pain of losing and so on, I then learn. And I learned that many of the things that um, I was surprised about were things that never happened in my lifetime before. And that's why I was surprised, but that they happened before. Um, you know, uh, the first time I was clerking on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange in 1971, and nobody was accepting dollars. And then I came on August 15th, President of the United States basically says, you're no longer going to get the gold and we're not going to do, do that. I walk on the clerking on the floor of the exchange. I figured, wow, what a crisis. We're going to be down a lot. Stock market was up a lot. I didn't know what a currency devaluation was, but they happened many times. Um, the seventies and so on along those lines, um, were things that happened, happened in my lifetime. And I got in a habit of every time I would make a decision, particularly pain, painful decisions, that was my cue that I need to do more research. Every time I would, um, I have an expression, pain plus reflection equals progress. So I started, you know, if I have a painful experience, um, when I calmed myself down, I would say, what can I learn? And I would go back and I would study that. And then I would um, take that learning and I would write down a principle. I, I wrote it down. And by the way, I would recommend that you do that. When pain plus reflection, you're going to learn mostly through your pains. And then you reflect well, learn the lessons taken from others and do your research. And I would then write that down. And so I would do that for everything that all the decision making that I, I did. Uh, so I started um, Bridgewater and as mentioned out of a two bedroom apartment on a grow and I encounter things. So I did basically two jobs, the investing job and the running the business as an entrepreneur job. And for all those things, I accumulated a bunch of principles. And what I learned is that everything in life happens over and over again for the same reasons pretty much slightly different, but by and large for the same reasons. And then for that reason, I wanted, I knew that I needed to understand things that happened in my lifetime and the mechanics behind it. And that led me um, uh, to not only experience a lot of debt crisis because um, I've been doing this for about 50 years and in many different places, there were all sorts of debt crises. Um, it not, you know, I went through four major ones in the United States and I'm not talking recessions, I'm talking major ones. And then, but in all these countries, emerging markets, Latin American one, I went through a bunch and I knew that I also needed to study those that were, um, happened before, like the Great Depression or Germany's Weimar Republic and so on to get a frame of reference. Cause if I, how would I know that it wouldn't happen again? And I needed to understand the mechanics. So I did that. 
And that was one of the reasons, um, that was the main reason that we anticipated the financial crisis uh, in 2007, we anticipated 2008 financial crisis. And that um, brought me um, in contact with policymakers uh, and, and also uh, Tim Geithner, and Tim Geithner, Hank Paulson, Ben Bernanke, and, and I do this, by the way, with others in other country, countries when uh, similarly. But in any case, Tim um, um, had this comp compilation of research about all these crises and how I think the same thing happens over and over again. And then Tim um, coming in the financial crisis and Hank Paulson and, and Ben Bernanke asked me to make um, a book about it too, so that it would be captured 2008 financial crisis. That's the book that uh, you're given. And again, it's just that the same thing happens over and over again. So the way that I don't, when I don't know about something, the way I do it is I study all the times that that thing happened. Let's say, for example, uh, populism. I wasn't used to populism uh, being, um, you know, a, a big thing in developed worlds. So then I found all the cases of uh, populism and I wanted to read them all and then come up with a notion of what is an archetypical case. What does the typical one look like? And then by knowing what the typical one looks like, I get that clear into my mind. The same way a doctor who gets to see a lot of different cases starts to figure, okay, well, here's how a typical one happens. And then from there, then you start to study the differences of why is this one different from that one? And then you have a frame of reference. So that's what I did. And that's what I do with everything that I'm studying. I want to look at the, all of them and I want to understand how uh, the archetypical and the linkages on that. And that's what I did with, um, with the debt crisis. So the book that's there, um, it, there has a brief beginning. Uh, that just says what, you know, how do these things work? The archetypical, I think it's like 60 pages. It won't take you long. And then be, uh, behind that is three, three major ones looked at in, in, in depth. The Great Depression, then the inflationary depression of Germany's Weimar Republic, and then the 2008 uh, financial crisis looked at in real depth. So you can read the stories of those. And then and behind that is a brief review of all those that happened in the last hundred years, which is there have been 48 cases. And they basically all happen pretty much in the same way, but just with variations like a disease might evolve in different ways, but it, it has variations to it. So, OK, that's a big, long winded um, uh, introduction. But so that's what I want to uh, give you a sense of, take you through um, uh, the mechanics of that. Um, so that, that's what I'll do. Um, okay. So I, I first want to give you, uh, a big picture, uh, template of like, how do I look at economics? What is that? And, and, and this is a template. And by the way, um, if you want to take pictures of it or anything, you're welcome to do that. There's nothing proprietary here. Um, but I, I, I want to say, uh, just to distill it down and make it clear, I think that there are four big forces um, that determine what an economy is like. Um, and uh, those are uh, productivity, <laughs> short-term debt cycle, long-term debt cycle, and politics. So, but what I mean by productivity, living standards over a period of time rise because of output per man hour worked. And that basically comes from inventiveness. Creativity produces better ways of doing things and that raises living standards over a period of time. And